Now tracking, but straight to the big interview of the day. India, the world's largest rice exporter, has banned exports of broken rice and imposed a 20% tax on the exports of various grades of rice. All of this in order to bring down prices in the local market. This has left rice exporters worried. They are seeking an exemption for at least the consignments for which advance has been received. They've also complained against a 20% levy. Meanwhile, as per latest available data, deficit in paddy sowing due to inadequate rainfall in states like West Bengal, Jharkhand, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar stands at around 6%. Retail food inflation has accelerated to 7.6% in August on the back of a rise in prices of cereals, vegetables, pulses, milk and milk products. To talk about all of that and more, we're now joined by the Food Secretary, Sudhan Chupande. He's also part of the Cabinet Committee of Secretaries on Essential Commodities. And the committee meets every week to take stock of availability of essential commodities and monitors their prices as well. Mr. Pandey, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Let me start by asking you about the latest measures taken by the government to ensure that there is adequate supply in the domestic market and also check price rise. Let's talk about the export curbs on rice specifically. Uh, the Exporters Association has expressed its concerns on the fact that this, uh, you know, these are decisions that are taken overnight, uh, not advance notice or time is given, and hence some concessions should be made, for instance, uh, on the consignments that have already been agreed upon. Are you open, willing to consider those requests? See, uh, uh, you have to see the whole uh, issue in the context. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, recent, uh, some of the regulations that have been brought on the rice export, a very major quantity has been left out. Uh, that, uh, unfortunately, is not getting uh, highlighted. Say, for example, uh, a very major chunk of parboiled rice uh, is exported out of India. No curves have been uh, put on that, and it goes to countries like Bangladesh and many of the Western African countries who, whose uh, requirement uh, and uh, need uh, of this quality of rice, they are totally dependent on India. So that has been exempted. Likewise for the Middle East and uh, some of the uh, uh, WANA countries, uh, we export a lot of bas Basmati rice. Mm. That has also been uh, kept out of the regulations. Mm. Uh, it is only for two categories largely where uh, some regulations have been brought. One is the broken rice. And if you see the uh, broken rice uh, price trend in the domestic market, as well as the export in last four months from April to mm. August, then the broken rice export has gone up uh, from 50,000 ton it used to be in 19. Mm. And uh, uh, it has increased uh, 4,200 mm. percent uh, for this corresponding period of four months. Mm. So this is not a normal export growth. 42 times is a, is a very abnormal uh, growth. Mm. And uh, this has led to spike in the prices in the domestic market. Mm. Uh, it used to be around 15, 16 rupees in the domestic market. It had went to almost 22 rupees in the domestic market. Mm. What it does basically then it affects the prices for the poultry feed, cattle feed, and it impacts then the prices of the poultry product and the cattle products. Mm. And about 60 to 65 percent uh, cost is the feed stock cost for these okay. products. Okay. So therefore, in a situation when the prices have to be controlled uh, and this export is not normal export, mm. Uh, this has to be then seen from that perspective. No, no, so I, therefore, I think seeing the big picture right. is extremely important. Uh, so let's un understand this big picture. You're saying that the kind of spike that we've seen in the export of, uh, uh, of rice, specifically of the broken rice uh, category, uh, is up almost 4,200%. You've called it an abnormal surge. What do you attribute this abnormal surge Absolutely. to? Absolutely. Uh, what do you attribute this surge to? Uh, and secondly, in terms of the uh, uh, the prices, you said that they've gone up from 15 to 16 rupees now to about 22 rupees. Uh, do you, when do you start to see these measures impacting domestic prices? Yeah. So two questions, you very pertinent questions that you have posed. Uh, what was the reason for this abnormal uh, spike? Uh, one of the main reason was that the global supply chains across the world, they have got disrupted and many countries who used to be traditional exporter of 
uh, broken rice along with India, uh, they have not been supplying that quantity. And in, as a result of which, uh, the entire push was coming from India. And they were trying to fill that uh, gap. And of course, uh, any trade opportunity that comes the way of exporters, they would certainly like to uh, make use of those. But government has to balance the interest of all parties. Mm. And therefore, when this price hike uh, also became very abnormal, and therefore, this intervention uh, became absolutely necessary. Okay, uh, so you're saying that this intervention that was necessary to on try the broken and broken rice. This step has right. I, I understand. I want to understand from you if you've got uh, uh, more clarity on what the situation is like at the ports at this point in time. We saw, uh, you know, a reiteration of uh, of the circular issued by the government ostensibly to try and clear up things that have uh, uh, been held up at ports. Uh, we're given to understand over one million tons of rice shipments are stuck at various ports. Is there any? Uh, understanding on whether things have started to improve on the port front? See, uh, uh, these uh, measures, whenever they are, taking, are taken, they are taken uh, uh, after a particular evaluation of a situation. And all over the world, the export restrictions or import restrictions, whenever they are brought in by any government, then both the exporters and importers, they renegotiate their contracts and they align uh, their conditions to the new reality. So this happens, many countries, they put export duties, they put export curbs, import curbs, they put also uh, import duties and between the importers and the exporters, these terms are renegotiated and they are taken care of. So th this is not something which is abnormal. Mm. This is normal practice in the trade yeah. and that gets adjusted. Uh, yeah, you believe that it gets adjusted, but sir, at the end of the day, exporters also believe that this uh, does put a question mark on the sanctity of contracts that they get into and that is uh, perhaps the pain that they are expressing to the government because it uh, lends doubt to the contractual obligations that exporters find themselves committed to. But let me move away now and ask you uh, whether any further intervention in any other category is required at this point in time. As we pointed out, you're a member of the committee that monitors pricing as well as availability. Uh, given the various measures across different categories already announced, any further action, any further intervention warranted? See, uh, first thing also I must answer uh, about the contractual uh, honor, honoring the contracts between the two parties. Uh, see, in all international contracts, all uh, uh, companies who have been into this business, they have this standard clause that if any uh, duty is imposed, either increased or reduced, in fact, even the export incentives which at times were being given, uh, whenever they were given, the importers of various countries used to renegotiate the contract and used to insist uh, taking some of those benefits uh, uh, out of this scheme. So there is a general clause always in various contracts that if there is any regulation brought by the respective governments on both sides, then they, they will be taken by both parties. So this is not, as I said, this is not something abnormal. This mm. is a very normal standard condition which is part of the contract. As regards the second question that mm. you have raised, uh, government uh, is reviewing. Uh, we have a mechanism, institutional mechanism of almost reviewing all commodities which are essential in nature, uh, are of uh, consumer interest, importance, particularly now the festive season is also coming. Yeah. Uh, that. Uh, their review is taken, mm. their prices are monitored, their availability is ensured. So everything is uh, happening on day-to-day -day and weekly basis. Mm. So as of now, uh, government is reviewing every day situation. And for the time being, as I see, that whatever steps were necessary, they have been taken. And uh, as of now, there is no other thing that we feel is necessary. Okay, as of now, you don't believe that further intervention uh, is required. Uh, let me uh, understand from you uh, 
what the situation looks like as far as edible oils are concerned because we saw intervention by the government there to try and cool prices down and prices have come off very sharply almost 45 uh, percent off their highs uh, so can you explain to me whether uh, the government finds itself comfortable now as far as edible oils is concerned uh, and you know there was a, a duty-free exemption allowed till March that extension was granted as far as uh, uh, soy was concerned. Is that likely to continue or will you now review that given the kind of decline in prices that we've seen? See, uh, if you uh, see the prices uh, that have seen uh, fall decline on regular basis among all edible oils, uh, especially those which are imported into the country, it is very significant uh, uh, decline. But if you compare it with the pre-COVID period, uh, especially soya bean and sunflower oil are still high by about uh, 30 to 40 percent. Uh, uh, this is two year if, if you uh, consider rates in that cycle. And uh, normally uh, annual increase should not be more than uh, 4 to 5 percent. So by that logic, uh, in two years the increase at best could be 10, 11 percent, but not 40 percent or 30 percent. Mm. So they are still not at their normal rate because of various factors that uh, are due to uh, pandemic impact. Uh, but prices have come down and government has already announced TRQ, mm. the tariff rate quota uh, of 20 lakh metric ton both for soya bean as well as for sunflower oil at zero duty. So it is not only a March. Uh, two years quota has already been announced by the government, but first year's application is till March mm. and next year's application will start thereafter. So government policy is very transparent right. and very open uh, and therefore market, market uh, should be able to actually import that uh, quantity to give uh, benefit to the consumers in the domestic market. Uh, you know, since you talked about the festive season, Mr. Pandey, let me talk, you, talk to you about sugar uh, as well and what the outlook is like as far as sugar is concerned and specifically on uh, whether we're any closer to making an announcement as far as the export uh, quota is concerned. See, uh, there are three issues. Number one, of the previous sugar quota that uh, uh, was allowed by the government uh, of 112 million uh, lakh metric ton, out of that 107 lakh metric ton has already been exported which is highest ever in the history of India. So this is credit to the government that 107 lakh metric ton sugar has already been exported and still we are left with another 5 lakh metric ton balance quota that is available with us and we should be in a position to meet the requirement of our neighbors in particular and uh, like Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives, all these countries' uh, requirement comfortably we can meet apart from meeting our own requirement. In domestic market, by the end of September this month, we will still be left with a stock of about 60 lakh metric ton, mm. which is more than adequate uh, for uh, meeting our requirement of next two and a half to three months. And as a result of this availability of stock, we have very stable prices of the sugar in the domestic uh, market. And as regards the quota or the policy, export policy for the next year, government uh, is working on it and very soon they will come out with the export policy for the next sugar season. Okay, so uh, we still have to wait uh, for the government to announce the export policy as far as sugar is concerned. Uh, let me ask you about uh, uh, what concerns you specifically when we talk about sowing. And, uh, you know, we pointed out at the start of the program the latest situation as far as paddy sowing is concerned, about 6% lower year on year uh, as of the 2nd of September. Uh, how worried are you about that and any other specific vulnerabilities or areas of concern that you are monitoring more closely? See, on the rice, uh, uh, we are not vulnerable at all. Uh, at the moment, our uh, central pool stock position is about uh, uh, 230 lakh metric ton. Uh, we have availability of rice. We have about 
240 lakh metric ton of wheat also. So we are comfortable in terms of stock. And the coming procurement estimate, we just had meetings with all states across India uh, last week. And our estimation is that for the Kharif season, uh, we would be actually procuring a little more than what we procured last time. The state's estimate was about 570 lakh metric ton. But even a very conservative estimate from our side is about 510 lakh metric ton, which is almost 10 lakh metric ton more than what we procured last year. And then uh, Rabi season will also come. Uh, where we can comfortably procure about 100 lakh metric ton. So 600 plus lakh metric ton uh, procurement of rice uh, is, is very comfortably seen in coming months. And therefore, uh, as far as rice is concerned, uh, we are going to be uh, in a comfortable position and we need not worry uh, on any account. Okay, so no concern there as far as rice is concerned. You believe that you'll be able to procure 10 million tons more than uh, last year. Uh, food inflation, the general outlook on 10 the back... lakh metric tons, 10, not 10, lakh, 10 million. Sorry, 10 lakh metric tons. Uh, uh, on, yeah. on, uh, on account of the measures already undertaken, uh, what is the expectation in terms of food inflation? Because that, of course, continues to be on the higher side. Uh, do you believe that we will start to see some degree of easing there, some degree of normalization starting uh, on the back of the measures announced already? See, we are following basically two-pronged strategy. Number one, uh, ensuring availability. So ensuring availability, whether through the import route or through the uh, increase in the domestic supply is, is one part of the strategy. So if you ensure adequate availability, the food inflation will come down. Mm. The second part of the strategy is ensuring smooth distribution. So uh, right from the stockist to distributor to the retail, the distribution chain, whether cereals or edible oil or some of these essential commodities, we should have very smooth and uh, hassle-free kind of facility. So whether uh, use of uh, rakes by the railways are concerned, adequate number of rakes are being made available uh, for all supplies to be taken to various parts of the country. So both on both these fronts, we feel that uh, we should be able to contain food inflation uh, because by ensuring availability and ensuring its proper distribution, we should be able to contain prices. You have already seen that some of these prices have come down mm. and uh, uh, in future also we should be able to intervene effectively. Mr. Pandey, let me end by asking you, you know, I had a conversation with the MD of the IMF uh, a few days back and, uh, uh, you know, th th there was a cautionary message there in terms of food protectionism and, of course, also an acknowledgement of the fact that, look, uh, uh, India must do what it needs to do in order to protect its domestic market and its uh, citizens as well. But perhaps there needs to be a balance. As we move down the road, uh, in light of uh, the concerns expressed, uh, is there likely to be a review of not just the measures that we have undertaken, but also the manner in which the measures have been undertaken? Uh, let me give you some very important, it's a very important question, and I think for everyone it's important to know. Uh, a lot of us talked about wheat uh, uh, regulations. Before the imposition of those regulations, uh, we had uh, exported about uh, 21 lakh metric ton of wheat. And after the regulation, we have exported about 24 lakh metric ton of wheat. So, uh, why am and so far we have exported about uh, 44, 45 lakh metric ton of wheat. Why I am giving these figures that India has been very responsible and despite regulations, we had kept certain windows open to take care of all vulnerable countries, all our neighbors and figures very clearly reflect that all those requirements have been very carefully met and uh, their needs have been satisfied. So India behaves in a very responsible manner. Uh, situation because of the pandemic globally has been abnormal, 
But despite those pressures, we have been able to handle this situation in a very responsible manner. We were, we are still largest exporter of rice with about 41% uh, a share of both Basmati non Basmati rice. And this year, our exports so far till last month were about 72 lakh metric ton, uh, which is almost 16 18% higher than the previous year. Mm. So, uh, uh, these regulations are basically preventing speculative trading, stocking, but genuine requirement of various countries is being met fully. Mr. Pandey, uh, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 and giving us a very comprehensive breakup of where things currently stand across different commodities and what the outlook is going forward. Appreciate your time. That is the Food Secretary, Sudhan Chupande. We will take a break here on Business 360. Don't go anywhere. We return with more news.